Hello, and welcome back to Tyranny, where last episode we took Sentinel Stand, and we ended the lives of the last regent, spared the lives of the new regent, uh, by making the regent mother denounce uh, her claim to the throne, I suppose you could say. Which also saved the baby. Uh, the mother, of course, being Graven Ash's daughter. <laughs> what a twist. What a twist. We also claimed the Ocean Spire, but that's uh, trivial compared to ending the Edict of Storms. But we got a missive from Fatebinder Rogulus. And dear Fatebinder Ethan Drake, your actions at Sentinel Stand have once again supplied rumor mongers of the bastard city with stories to peddle. Some seem to think that your cunning twist of legalese intend to display some great support for the people of Stalwart. That, of course, only leads to speculation about which people of Stalwart you intend to benefit. The unbridled upstarts or the corrupt old queens. Others foolishly believe you unraveled the Overlord's Edict to prove that you could. As if a sliver of cleverness could bring Kairos low. As a scholar, I prefer the primary sources to gossip. So allow me to ask you plainly, why did you choose to spare the child? It was the right thing to do. Dear Fane by Neragulus, when faced with the choice to save a child or consign it to death, I chose to save it. That does not seem so strange a thing to me. Either decision would have fulfilled the Overlord's will. The last ruling house of Stalwart met its end in the Blade Grave. You need read nothing more into it than that. Which is... True. Sorry. I did it more for... Um... I can't. Amelia, than I did... Well, it's also the right thing to do. Again, Ethan's not very good at morally difficult decisions. Let me put it that way. But we're going to return to Ascension Hall. Can't do that. Uh, and uh, discuss our next move. It's just going to be a bitch until it heals, isn't it? Fuck. Sorry, talking about a, a, an injury I had today. An, an annoying one, but whatever. You're a fool if you think you can win this war without the support of mages. Do you think Kairos conquered Taratus with the force of arms alone? Matthias glowers at Ari. Southerners failing to play nice? Can't say I'm not surprised. We chose to recruit the Unbroken so that Zendia's weapons wouldn't go to waste. Questioning our every move is a good way to make us regret our decision, Captain. This is no time. This is no time to bicker over our petty differences. That's the sort of talk that landed us in this mess in the first place. <sighs> I li What's going on here? Just a simple disagreement among allies, which seems too familiar at this juncture. She glares at the assembled leaders. We're a coalition of the truest daughters and sons of the tears. We need to be selective of who we invite into the fold. We should pursue an alliance with the Earthshakers. I know it seems counterintuitive, but think about it. 
Their guild bent the knee to Kairos, which means they've had the freedom of research and unlimited resources. The less cooperative mage guilds have been denied. Kairos invested in the guild, but we also have the opportunity to reach the benefits. Look, no matter how you paint it, this co- will, nah, That's uh, totally different than the voice I just did. No matter how you paint it, this coalition is a blind spot in its defense against Kairos' armies, who employ the likes of the Blood Chanters and the Earth Shakers. The Sages at the Burning Library haven't bent the knee, and their guild is in decline. Both the Unbroken and the Vendrian Guard have worked with them in the past, and we know the value of their wisdom. I will seek out the Sages and the... It seems wise to seek out both. Agreed. And in time, we'll hopefully cast a wide net, possible, building this army. But there's no telling if circumstances will get worse in the Stone Sea, nor how much longer the Sages will cling to existence. We need to act swiftly, and you can only be in one place at a time. Sages. In spite of my own reservations, I can't deny the Sages are a dedicated bunch, and we could do much worse than invite them into the fold. I know a sage works closely with Renata, the de facto leader of the guild. I'll have words sent ahead of you, so you can expect that Renata will anticipate your coming. Holy fuck, you bitch! <laughs> I saw that, but I had stuff to get rid of in my throat. Got fucking blood and mark. Holy shit. I was not expecting you to show up. Blood and Mark emerges from the shadows, daggers drawn. His golden eyes flare, then darken as his pupils expand, his face set with purpose. Surprise gasps escape from your allies in Ascension Hall, quickly followed by the clang and scuffle of weapons being raised at the ready. Careful, Archon. You're outnumbered. And we are not afraid of the shadows. He throws his head back and laughs deeply. <laughs> oh, man. Soldiers raking, shadows flaring behind him like massive black wings. The lights flicker and die, consumed by the spreading you darkness. Should be. Roll your eyes. He grins, teeth starkly white, but it's not a friendly expression. I've been watching you, Fatebinder, and I don't mean in the fun way. I want answers for what you did in the Blade Grave. You broke an edict and survived. That made you a fluke. But then you broke another and survived it. And that makes you interesting. You will tell me how you did it. I just... understood how. Is it unusual? Yes, very unusual. As in, I'll now be keeping an eye on you for the Overlord. And how did you feel after? Great. Like I could take on anyone and win. That sounds promising and dangerous. Now the question is, will the effect intensify or lessen for you with each subsequent edict you unravel? I'll be waiting and watching you. Well, that's not terrifying at all. Fortunately, I know I can take on Blood and Mark. Right. This is my first playthrough. I would be absolutely pissing myself with fear. But I've been around this bend a couple times. I know that he's not loyal to Kairos. I know that he chafes against his shackles. And I know that if I play my cards right, I can turn him against Tunan. But that, in of itself, has its own... ...issues. Still... Onwards towards the Burning Library, which... ...should be fairly swift. Where are the other spies? That's the Ocean Spire. 
the sunset spire, the mountain spire. There's a spire here, a spire there, and I think that's the other two. Um. Because I'm trying to calculate when to do Bastard's Wound. I think I'll do Bastard's Wound just before I kill the other Archons. Dear Fatebinder Ethan Drake, you display curious empathy for those who name you enemy. I sincerely hope that history remembers it as one of your critical strengths rather than your most dire weakness. Remember that the Overlord favors Ephes Eph efficacy over empathy. Rare is the fake binder who delivers both. Well, found something. You'll learn that I am more than I seem. So. What lies at effigy? Renata. As you approach, you see a stern-faced woman having a heated discussion with a frightened young man. She holds out a piece of paper in her hand and punctuates every few words with a pointed tap on the sheet. The young man turns bright red and takes two shuffling steps backward, his eyes casting about for help from the group, but no one gathered will meet his gaze. Finally, the woman throws the paper at him and says dismissively, We're done here. The young man makes a couple of frantic grabs at the paper before finally securing it, then turns and runs away, tripping as he goes. The woman squeezes her eyes closed, sighs, and puts the palm of her hand against her forehead, working it around in small circles. She takes another deep breath, and then turns to face you. She gives you a half bow. Her face is stoic and no longer shows any signs of frustration. Fatebinder, you honor us with your presence. My name is Renata. She makes a small gesture of salute. I'm sorry we're not better prepared to receive you, but we've had our hands quite full recently. She waves a hand dismissively away, shooing the old subject before starting on a new one. However... You are not here to talk of such matters, and I am certain we can come to a mutually beneficial arrangement. What business do you have with the sages? I'm gathering a force to stand against Kairos' armies. We want the sages to help us. Blunt, direct, and to the point. I like that, and I would love to help you, but my attention needs to stay a little closer to home for the time being. The chorus are swarming all over my former home. Right now, I have nowhere to go and practically no one to help you. They're desecrating the library, and I'm afraid they'll find the Silent Archive. If we lose that, my whole life's work goes up in flames along with the building. And on top of it all, we'll have to deal with some of the smoke and embers from the Edict of Fire. So you'll forgive me if I don't take you up on that offer. If I eliminate the course and retrieve the Archive, will you join me? Renata gives you a confused look. Seriously? That's no small task, Fatebinder. They've taken control of the grounds, and I don't even know if you can get to the archive. She chews the side of her mouth, thinking, All right, well, I have heard tale of you doing some pretty outrageous things. If you're serious about doing this, the sages will join you. We've had nothing but pain and destruction at the hands of the disfavored in the chorus, and I would be happy to return their guidance tenfold. And I can help you get to the library unscathed. One of my sages escaped captivity and was able to return here with information where all their patrols are. Unfortunately, actually getting the archive isn't going to be as easy as walking in and picking it up. It's protected by an arcane barrier that prevents passage into the chamber that holds it. Once you get inside the citadel, you'll need to find parts of the passcode. She sighs and shakes her head. Passcode? 
The sages in charge of the Valium Citadel changed the runes needed to deactivate the barrier every week. Only a specific few were told the actual sequence. They said it was to prevent unwanted eyes in the vault. I say it's because they were control freaks and liked to make people jump through hoops. The passcode was broken into four parts and placed in shelves around the Citadel. Anyone with a sufficient skill could find the runes and decipher the passcode, telling them how to deactivate the barrier. That's what you'll need to do. Oh, and uh, one more thing. The Silent Archive is the focus for the spell that's keeping the library from collapsing. You can't simply take it from its home. A suitable substitute must be put in its place. The chamber where it is housed was used as a storage place for powerful artifacts. If you search in there, you might find something that could be used to take place of the scroll. Do this for me, and the sages will be in your debt. Very well. To the burning library! Air smells of sulfur and fume. Well, the chorus have definitely been here. Found something. It's their decor. The soldier walking past catches a glimpse of you and immediately points her spear towards you. The sensor will be very interested in your presence, Fatebinder. She is near the entrance. Go. Now. You don't get orders to me, Scarlet Chorus. Trouble is afoot. I'm here to kill all of you bastards. I am your shield wall. And the best part. Uh, control fire gets way deadlier here. Welcome to your and I really don't feel like talking to more chorus members. You'll have to hit harder than that. Oh, did that work? Will do. To battle! <laughs> right. Oh, you fools. Right. On your knees, word! This weapon is like nipples on men. Useless. Beast woman. Get shield wall. I got it. Kill the blood chinter. Kill the blood chinter. Kill the blood chinter. As quickly as possible, please. There we go. Will do. The horde are weak. I can't take a Nobody heard that, right? Right. All right. Let's go further. There's that barrier. Ow. Oh, fuck. I needed to get rid of Barrack. Shit. I'll be back. Nothing says go the fuck away like a magical barrier right as you walk through the main archway. It's so delightfully rude. I almost admire it. I only had Barrack for Sentinel Stand. not feel good. But whatever, I'll 
I'll deal with it. A thick wreath of smoke is visible from the road, coiling in the sky from behind a charred hill. A few discordant cries break the stillness of air for a brief moment. You follow the ashen trail to its source and spot a crowd of villagers surrounding the smoldering ruins of a burnt house, somber and grave. Demand an explanation. The smell of burnt flesh assails you as you approach. A haggard-looking woman notices you and gasps, gathering up her soot-covered skirt in her hands as if ready to flee. You see a dozen other men and women with her, faces gaunt, skin cracked and dusty from ash. You demand an explanation, and the woman admits that the village gave shelter to four sages, a decision that she considered foolhardy. Fearing reprisal from Chorus patrols or to save with scouts, she barricaded the house's only door and set fire to the building while they slept. The group isn't of one mind. Some remain quiet while others call her a murderer. Their argument intensifies momentarily before you let out a shrill whistle to silence them. The villagers turn to regard you. Their fate's in your hands. Execute the woman for illegally destroying potential war assets. Citing your authority you as fate binder, you pronounce the woman guilty of the willful destruction of war assets, noticing, noting that the sages and their belongings should have been directed to agents of Kairos for lawful disposal. She drops to her knees, hands trebling as she lowers her head. Between pained gasps, she begins to tell the other villagers that she had their interest at heart, but is silenced by your weapons before she can re finish her words. The settlers cry out in horror, but not a single word of protest is uttered. You ignore the now frightened villagers and step towards the blackened house, spotting two corpses near its now collapsed door. You quickly rifle through the sage's blackened bodies and retrieve a few items of value. Better to confiscate them than to leave such knowledge in the hands of peasants. And more importantly... She murdered people. This wasn't for Toonon, it was to avenge their deaths. There was a congratulate, a just kill horror, or a kill everyone. And uh, none of those I'm particularly happy with. Uh, uh, one moment, my friend. Just let me finish this thought. I've... Uh... Be seeing you, Fatebinder. Fatebinder wants Beast Woman? I want to make sure that my party likes me enough. We got planetary's good. Barracks. Barracks on Razor's Edge. There's got to be a way to bring him closer to not hating me. My Lord Binder, you have something which requires my attention? What can I do for you? I'd like to more about you. I am the line your enemies cannot cross. All other details are meaningless. But I suspect you have some thirst for details, so ask away. Tell me about your name. Barrick is the shortening of my northern surname, which has been passed down through the generations since Ash assembled his army. I go by it because I wear it with pride. Their proper form is Berakonin. Beyond its age and association with the General's Legion, the name of Berakonin has no great titles or associations. I hold no claim to a great house or legacy, save for the disfavored. They are all the kin I need. What's the story with your armor? It is a symbol of Kairos's will, one that I am not likely to forget. I found this armor. Perhaps it would be better to say that it found me. 
during the Edict of Storms. I proclaimed that edict. Where were you when it struck? I was in the field. Even though I knew the people of Stalwart would receive no warning, duty felt compelled me to march on the stronghold into the heart of the realm, and there was important work left unfinished. Our march was a hasty one. A cord of disfavored soldiers vanished in the second year of the war. Among them Graven Ash, blah, 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 blah. This is information I already am aware of. Uh, opening peals of thunder, begged for deliverance. Yeah. Looks like pretty solid protection. Uh, do you do your own repairs? Back to my questions about you. Uh... I'm just trying to make Beric not hate me. Uh, fuck, he's so close. I was just trying to get, I was just, just trying to get them to talk. Mm. Mm. Oh well. I was trying to get Beric to like me more. But yeah, we, we already know what happened to Beric. I mean, we already, we already talked to him about that one. And the other conversations were about how he feels about the chorus and Narat, which obviously he hates the chorus, obviously he hates Narat. And then, as far as Sarin, he obviously thinks she's a whiny child. And she kind of is, but... Can't do that. I mean, she's, like, what? She's younger. She's the youngest member of the party by far, so, you know. But Lanitry, I will increase his... There we go. Oh, I have uh, two more points. Okay. Um, oh, there we go. I can only hope that however I choose to deal with Ash. I don't know, man. I don't fucking know. As you approach the bodies at the end of the hall, the sage makes a low squeal of fear and falls over, feigning death. Wow, I'm convinced both of these bodies are totally dead. The sage sighs and looks up at you. I wasn't sure that would work. Well, I was absolutely sure it wouldn't, but how was I supposed to know you weren't another one of those gangs? They're everywhere. I've been hiding in the area ever since the edict tore this place apart. You can never be too careful. He stops, staring intently at you. You're a fate binder. <coughs> he coughs, blood flecking his lips. He wipes them clear with the back of his hand. I can't believe there's a fate binder in the citadel. Must have really pissed Kairos off that we were able to stop the edict before it could completely destroy everything. I'd love to see the look on everyone's face when the whole thing stopped. Shocks in us, though, I suppose. I don't think it worked the way they hoped. It didn't stop the edict, it just kind of froze everything in place as it was being destroyed. Well, preservation is preservation, I suppose. He shrugs, winces, and coughs up more blood. Not that it's doing us any good with the chorus in here. Did you hear how many of those thugs were in? And when I saw them enter, I knew I couldn't stay in hiding any longer. I had to come in and prevent anyone else from getting in, so I activated the barrier by the door. Fantastic. So you just sprouted wounds? 
I came over here to destroy the piece of the passcodes no one could get through. But one of them must have followed me. He attacked me and told me that he'd kill me if I didn't tell them how to get through. You can see how well that went for him. Please, you have to protect the Citadel from the chorus. Don't let them destroy it. The piece of the passcode will get you through the first barrier. Find the rest and keep them from those monsters. They cannot be allowed to unlock our secrets. Let me bind these wounds. That's okay. I know I'm not long for this world. Don't worry. Just keep the Citadel safe. <laughs> Uh, a bookshelf. Uh, standard curiosity protocols demand we rummage. Yeah, if you idiots would actually walk through it. How fortuitous, Lenetry exclaims, looking over your, so your shoulder at the scrap of paper you pull from the shelf. This is truly part of the passcode needed to bypass the barrier protecting the silent archive. I haven't been this excited since I learned my first sigils. Truth is, in all my decades at the Citadel, I never once set foot anywhere near the archive. He started thumbing through the shelf, opening books, flipping through the pages, and shaking them by the spine to loosen any scraps of parchment that might be hidden within. You won't find anything, Lanatry. Sorry, I can't. See? Every once in a great while, things are easier than I expect. Though I doubt any other barriers are going to be this easy to bypass. Keep that phrase. This is a good sign. If they had not secured the silent archive, they wouldn't have bothered to leave passcodes for any returning sages. Sorry, I can't. Uh, let's go kill the chorus. Hey, uh, I'm here. I want to talk to you. A haggard man stands in the middle of the group, addressing each of them through clenched teeth. They are lounging in the room, almost completely ignoring him. If you can't get in line, I'll swear I'll leave you to burn in this forge. Do you want that? Just listen to me and we can all get out of here with our eyebrows and dick. They're glowing parchment fragments. How hard could they be to find? He notes your approach and calls out. Fadebinder, what are you doing here? I'm watching an underdeserving leader try and direct a worthless crew. Two of Olsten's men look at each other and then look at him. Did he just insult us? Olstein closes his eyes and lets out a defeated sigh. Look, I didn't ask for this. I'm just trying to stay alive. He suddenly straightens as if he realizes you're still standing there. Shape up, you worthless fucks! He snaps at them, then looks back to you. I'll find the archive even if it kills me. Oh, of course you will. A disorganized group of malcontents led by a man who can't even keep control of them. That's some real competition, I tell you. I'd be surprised if you even made it out of this room, let alone the Archive. I am sorry, Mr. Sirin. I didn't even know you were here! Fat Olsten makes an awkward bow to the mocking delight of his men. I didn't mean to imply I was anyway superior to you. It's the heat. And these fools. They're as scared as baby beastmen. Do you need anything else? What the fuck are you doing here? He looks at his men, who stare blankly. Well, I assumed you do. Why else would the censor have let you in? <laughs> she didn't let me in, boss. I killed her. He shrugs, absentmindedly scratching at his armpit. She put us in here to compete. We're supposed to find the archive. And isn't it just like the course to have a contest that gets a score of decent soldiers killed? That's just why we're going to find it first. Rather, we were bent on finding it. This slaughter is squeamish as babes who don't even want to singe the hair on their toes. Haven't even found a single piece of the passcode. We blocked the passage so no one could follow us, so then they sat down and refused to move. You people are pathetic. Your leader gave you an order, and I suggest you follow it before... No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to simplify this contest by killing all of you. Also, I am... Like, made a deal with the sage. Like, that's the response I'm going to pick. That's not what I'm actually going to say. What I'm actually going to say is, 
you know, I, I, I killed the sensor on my way in. Um, I can't let you get the archive, but that is uh, going to be my prize. So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to kill all of you. <laughs> and then I proceed to kill all of them. It's like, I'm not going to be like, ah, simplify the contest. I'm just going to be like, yeah, no, I just, I, I need that, and I don't want you to have it, because I need it, so I'm going to die. <laughs> there are no peaceful solutions, so murder them all. Ooh, trap detected from surprisingly far away as well. Ooh, that fire I'm hurts. Doing a little it? too much. Ooh, I'm enjoying this a little too much. That's fine. Yes. I don't mind gating a little bit of wrath. Gaptooth, there's someone out here. <sighs> Tell them to get their asses in here. Get your asses in here. Gaptooth wants to talk to you. What the fuck? See that? A rough looking woman's. <laughs> I'm not going to have peace with any of you. This is not canon. This is. I'm just gonna skip all this bullshit dialogue. This is not canon. But the actual canon is just murdering all these idiots. Another battle. <laughs> this whole. This whole level makes no goddamn sense starting to think we're bad at making friends like the reality of it is i'd be like i have to kill all of you to creel the library out and get and get the archive to get the sages on my side i promised i was going to eliminate the scarlet goras now i'm guessing there are those who still want to pretend that the royal de kairos or some shit but uh no I'm, i there, there is no semblance of loyalty unless I'm in front of the Archons. If I'm not in front of the Archons, I'm sorry, but uh, I'm rebel as hell. So I'm just going to skip the rest of the dialogue with all of the chorus in this place because... Uh, unless it's something like, I'm going to kill all you bastards now because uh, I need to... Or, like, get the fuck out of here, because I need you to get the fuck out of here. But if, like, that's not an option I can pick, then I am 100% just skipping it. You're dead. <laughs> <laughs> what was I thinking? Huh? <laughs> you have to hit harder than that. Sorry, I can't. <laughs> This is useless. I should try something else. Try the round for me. I've got it. Now, make sure I didn't forget anything. We aren't flirting with total disaster. We aren't doing it right. Hey, oh no. Sage, my man. What up? What up, brother? The sage backs up as you approach, fear in his eyes. No, please don't hurt me. Oh. You're not chorus members. But they're nearby. I can hear them. I would leave, but they blocked the exit, and I can't open the barrier without the right key. You're free to go. I, uh, I killed all those bastards already. 
Oh, I can never thank you enough for what you've done. Please, take this. Maybe it'll help you. I, I wasn't able to finish my research, but uh, maybe you can. I'm gonna run away. the depths we go, I guess. Oh, great. More course members to slaughter. A large man stands with his back to you, gesticulating wildly at the beastmen around him. He points north, up the stairs at the wall of the shell just on the rise. Get to it, you mind, you frick! It's not what is going to hurt you. That's a piece of the passcode, I just know it. The beast woman he's currently yelling at vehemently shakes his head. No! Shiny, crackly, light, hurt beast will not touch, no! Well, that was a spell cast by the sage. He points at a body near the sayers. Who is now dead, by the way? So there isn't going to be any more shinily, crackly light to hurt you. Just go and get it. The rest of us need to stay here and keep anyone else from getting it. I don't go. Meesman shakes his head again. Look, you're worthless, all of you. How did I get stuck with the monster brigade? Yo, bitch. Die. Oh, I'm just going to say I'm the fate finder and you should get the fuck out of here. The man turns to you, his ill-fitting armor straining against his chest. Oh, what are you doing here? His face took on a sour look and he shakes his head. Emma, I don't really care. We're not going to let you pass, no matter your reasons. The contest is in the back. If anyone is going to get the archive first, it's going to be me. And if you think I'm letting you know anywhere near that piece of passcode, think again. Someone has already tried to take that from me and failed. There is a conspicuous cough from behind the man who rolls his eyes and looks over his shoulder. I'm the fate binder of Tunon, and I suggest you move. I have business here. Title may nothing to me, and there may never less down here. Does the title protect you in a library with an undying flame? Doubtful. Actions have more meaning down here than words ever will. You would do well to watch yourself, peasant. You speak to a fate binder and you will address him appropriately. Sirin. Here. In the flesh. This is fortunate for me. I could kill a fate binder and a songbird at the same time. Srin laughs, her melodic voice cutting through the chaotic noise around you. You will try and you will fail like anyone else who has dared to stand against us. You will see plenty of action. Well, time for you to die. Heads on the way. I tried to warn you. And you wait, why did I gain Srin loyalty for that? That makes no fucking sense. <laughs> you allowed Sirin to be which parent. Only temporarily. See that? I'm not entirely useless. I think my wisdom is finally catching up to my effort. Junk. It's not junk. You're just facing a lot of guys. Get back here. There you go. 
And Lanitry gets another level up because he is relatively low level compared to the rest of the party. All right. Can't do that. See that? Can't do that. All right. Now, what else lies See down that? here? Oh. Oof. Consider it done. On it. Stupid edict ruining the whole place. That oh. doesn't kill me. Leaves me bitter and jaded. Ah, screw it. I'm gonna rest. Oh, we can't with enemies inside. Shh. Bane. Beyond the rock wall. Stay where you are. I'm gonna destroy deal with them. it. No, I said, Sarin, don't Take shout them. out destroy them when I'm trying to be stealthy. I mean, I know I wasn't crouching or anything, but. I think my wisdom is finally catching up to my head. Well, I was Can't gonna zap it, but then it died, so. All right. Just one more piece. Which I believe is up here somewhere. Yeah, Sentinel Stand is one of the longer um, quests. As far as ending the, uh, the edict. Eat to Fire is actually one of the quickest. Interesting. So there's some new blood here to feed the furnace. I doubt you'll last long. Just die. Just die. But really, terror? Really? Just burn him. I will have your hand. No, you won't. Get back here. Oh. I've got a lot of powers. It will take more than that to break me. You will fall before us. Oh. On it. Wow, the sages are actually surprisingly tough. But not tough enough. This weapon is entirely worthless. Ooh, fury. I need to try a different tactic. This isn't working. Powerful, but this useless weapon. I'm too old for this. Really? There we go. I got it. Yeah, I know I already know the sigil. I'm just trying to get Will do. The hell out of here. Hello. That looks like the final piece. I can't fucking believe it. I'm going to see the silent archive. Oh, keep it together, Lanitry. You're going to give yourself a heart spasm. Then bear a smile, Lanitry takes a swig from a vial of ink off his bandolier. 
The symbol on the page begins to swim before your eyes, fading and reappearing as you watch. As you stare at them, they slowly resolve themselves into a series of sentences. First and foremost, for those who have the strength of will, the door to the north shall open. Second comes passion, burning like the south of an unending fire, to provide vitality to the dedicated. Then from the west shall the one with true resolve come to explain the gravity of commitment. Lastly, to the east, prepare yourself to brace against those who would push you down. Let your might be solid stone. That never ends, does it? The injured oath brown soldier laughs ruefully, causing her to cough. Flecks of blood spew from her mouth and it's the cheek of the sage currently binding her wounds. Sorry. You're fine. A little blood comes with the territory, but you need to keep quiet or I won't be able to get this done right. I don't want you bleeding out. Thank you. I appreciate you to help, even with all the trouble we've caused you. The sages aren't as nearly as bad as I was led to believe. She smiles and winces. She stares at you. All signs of levity gone from her expression. What are you planning on doing? We're both trapped here with those course members right on the other side of that rubble, and I'm certainly in no shape to fight. It would seem we're in quite a bind. You're right. My life spared won't turn the tide. You're not worth killing. Both of them visibly relax. The soldier slumps against the shelves and the sage returns to his work, binding her wounds. Thank you. Finding mercenary for mercy from anyone here is the last thing I expected. We aren't going anywhere right now, but as soon as I'm ready, I can get us out. The problem is the group over there. I already killed them. Thank you. Again, I'm not a cruel and wicked person. Now, I do forget. Nope, sorry. Uh, ooh. Nope, sorry. I do forget the way out. Oh, I hate that the map does that. On it. Be yeah, African. I think I'm supposed to go this way. Yeah, I'm supposed to go this way. There we go. Powerful warding magic keeps this place intact. Who knows how long it will hold? We didn't spend all this time gathering information on how to get past this to give up here. Read that poem again. No shit. North, south, west, east. Which should also technically link up with the magical symbols that they represent. But... Cardinal directions are a little bit easier. And if I recall correctly, the remnants of the Scarlet Chorus are going to try and fight me here, and I'm going to be like, you guys are dumb. And there she is. The Silent Archive. Yep, I was I remembered correctly. Well played, Vate Binder. Whether you wanted it or not, you've completed my game to perfection. She strides forward eagerly, glancing past you. The newly uncovered chamber. 
I've been sending idiots into the furnace for months with no avail, and yet you've done the impossible in mere hours. She pauses, scratching her chin in thought. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised literacy proved useful in getting past that barrier in a place like this. My men couldn't tell scholarly writing from chicken scratch. <laughs> Lesson learned. And bodies are cheap anyway. It's a shame your talents can't be put to further use for the voices. She shakes her head. Ah, you have a talent for ruthlessness, you know. But your string of successes ends here. Your body will join those of the sages on the altar. It's rather amusing if you think about it. They may have stopped the building from collapsing, but they couldn't stop the edict or the chorus. All they did was sacrifice themselves for a scrap of parchment they're going to lose anyway. I figured it would come down to this. I'm ready. More time. You shouldn't have fought a guy who specialized in fire, being the name The Phoenix, in a place where the eat of fire is, uh, amplifying our fire attacks. This is useless. I should try something else. Harsh words would cause more harm than this useless weapon. This is useless. I should try something else. Come on. There we go. More flames. Can't do that. More shock. No crap! My nose! My nose! No! Oh, it was a clever attack. Really was. But not clever enough. Sorry, I can't. But oh, that's not what I wanted. Found something. That's what I wanted. And a little something to help Eb out. Oh, no, Lanatry out. Ooh. Unbroken Legacy. This armor is a shining amalgamation of the once fine pieces of the Blade Grave and Restored. I'll take that. Fine, fine piece of armor. Yeah, but that's light armor. All right. A nimbus of magical energy surrounds the scroll, which levitates above the central platform. You see characters upon the parchment, but they seem to shift from one language to the next. Amazing. I had suspected there was more to the silent archive than a simple vault. Extraordinary. This scroll must represent thousands of scholarly works. The motion of the characters on the scroll's surface slows as you approach, seemingly in response to your presence. Analyze the active spell. Judging by the bodies splayed around the archive, the mages appear to have been successful in their attempts to halt the destruction of Kairos' edict, though they did not survive the process. While the nature of the ongoing spell isn't clear, it seems likely that Renata's claim is correct. The archive is used as a focus for the protective magics. Examine the aura surrounding the scroll. 
Waves of energy radiate out from the scroll, billowing up towards the ceiling and fanning out to encompass the cavernous chamber. It appears that the Silent Archive is an active participant in some sort of ongoing spell, yada yada yada. Deconstruct the focus. Thanks to Renata's guidance, you're able to- which even then my focus is- my uh, lore is high enough to know. You are quickly able to discern the nature of the spell, uh, operates at a massive scale, its chaotic energy is currently stabilized by the archive itself, its underlying mechanism is familiar. It seems likely that any artifact of sufficient power could serve as the focus. Should the need arise, you believe you could swap the silent archive for another item of power without disrupting the ongoing magic. Swap it with an artifact. You might be able to grab the silent archive and replace it with something of roughly equal arcane might. Make sure whatever you swap isn't something you'll need later. Well, I don't need the grave bow. Technically, I have a duplicate insignia. So I'll get rid of the duplicate. You delicately remove the archive from the central pedestal, careful to replace it with another artifact in the span of a few seconds. The lines of energy flowing through the platform center warble and distort concerningly for a moment, accompanied by faint tremors that unsettle the molten liquid below. After a few seconds of uncertainty, the spell's magics refocus upon the newly placed object, its lines of energy once again resuming their stable flow upward and out to the rest of the burning library. The swap appears to have worked, and you have earned the silent archive for your trouble. All that remains is to take the artifact outside. Once the silent archive has crossed the threshold leading to its exterior, it is likely you will fulfill Kairos' mandate to remove all forbidden knowledge from the Citadel. Bubbling heat and lava. Watch out. Can't do that. They'll burn you real good. I like how the game has to tell you that, hey, whatever you place here, you can't get back. <laughs> it's gonna get buried under lava. Oh, more fools. Oh, no, wait. No, 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 no. That was just the bane. Fuck. Oh, that can't be good. I didn't want to fight you, bane. I'm over the hour mark. I'm trying to get this video over with. So that way people won't be like, wow, that's a really long video. I'm only going to watch part of it. And then like totally forget to watch the rest. Well, this is interesting. Right. There we go. This video ends when the eat the fire ends. I've got the archive. I've got the thingy. I just gotta go this way. Making my way out of the library, making my way, making my way, lava, lava, volcano. Can you believe that Kairos made an entire volcano? Because that's what he did. He made a freaking volcano. It's, it's, it's amazing. Like, the level of magical power that Kairos has is, is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. 
but he has to have somebody else actually read the edicts, which is also interesting. We satisfy the terms of the edict, did we not? Yet the library is still there. I guess Kairos only knows what happens next. The air surrounding you begins to thin, and the smell of embers begins to diminish. The clouds of smoke slowly revealing the sky beyond them. You feel a powerful pulse of warm energy burst from the silent archive. Sound disappears into a deafening silence. Your vision blurs, and you are overcome by a dizziness that nearly knocks you off your feet. Then, as quickly as it hits you, the feeling passes. The air around you begins to settle, with the particles of fire and ash that moments ago stung your eyes dissipate with this chilly gust. With the silent archive removed from the burning library, the edict of fire is extinguished, and the warmth feels pulled into your very chest. You know, you're just asking for it from the sages. You're never going to hear the end of it. First the edict, next they'll want to scour the tears for the torn out pages of a farming almanac. While I'm all in favor of undoing the overlord's magic, this whole edict of fire couldn't have happened to a shittier gaggle of scum suckers. Still, the fires could have spread elsewhere in time, so you did the right thing. So much knowledge turned to smoke and ash. Ending this edict couldn't undo the damage, but perhaps now this place can be rebuilt. I hope future scholars can unearth whatever remaining books and scrolls are still buried within. The shape and intensity of the fires leap into your mind. Details of the mighty incantation, the wording, the magical logic of the flames are all seared into your mind with perfect recall. The edict of fire is now a part of you. As the edict fills you with its power, you feel the inferno inside the burning library begin to wane. Temperatures start to cool, lakes of lava recede, and an eternally burning fires flicker and fade. It may take time before the library is referred to as the Citadel again, but ending the edict will allow access to knowledge that thought to be lost forever. I will admit I had my doubts, Fatebinder. Tales of people's deeds and accomplishments are always exaggerated, and legends never do seem to live up to the stories told of them. So when you said you would help us, I assumed I'd never see you again. And yet, here you are. When we arrived, we found the sensor gone and the remaining chorus easily fell. We've already started setting up a permanent camp and will soon be able to explore the library and retrieve anything else that was lost to us. The sages will join you in defiance of Kairos' rule. I will go to Ascension Hall and lend my voice to those of dissent. As you are obviously capable of protecting the Silent Archive, I will leave it in your care until we can rebuild the library and make a new home for it. We are truly in your debt. And blood marks bound to show up. Yes, no. Maybe so. No. Not yet, at least. Maybe back at the Citadel. Well, now feels like as good a time as ever as we've uh, gained the sages to our side. To remind all of you that there are votes ongoing for uh, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. You can vote for the class you want me to play, which is the Soldier, the Scout, and the Scoundrel. Um, you can also vote for the Weapon Styles, which is the Single-Handed Weapon the double-handed weapon, and two single-handed weapons. Uh, there are also ongoing votes for the advanced Jedi classes, uh, the Guardian, the uh, Senatal, and the Counselor. Votes for those are ending on the episode that I go to the Bastard's Wound. That will be the last episode you can vote for. Uh, that I will be able to read them in time. Um, as once the last five episodes of Tyranny are recorded, I will begin to play Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. 
Um, so the Bastard's Wounds episode is the last episode that I can guarantee that I will get your votes in. Um, the episode that I begin to delve into the Bastard's Wound. Um, obviously the advanced classes, you can get your votes in a little bit later. Uh, as that won't happen until I get to that point in the game. But do keep in mind that you get to that point in the game fairly quickly. Uh, so you're not going to have a whole lot more. Maybe, I mean, upload schedule-wise, maybe another couple of weeks tops. Um, maybe a month. It, it depends on how long it's going to take. I, I don't remember. It's been a while. But um, the only way to guarantee that you get your votes in in time is to finish those votes on... By that episode. I uh, just want to remind you guys of that. That is a thing. Um, and with that, I will see you guys in the next episode of Tyranny, where we will probably report back to Tunon. Depends on what the game makes me do. Uh, and we will be ending, or at least attempting to end, uh, the Edict of Stone in that episode. We'll see where the campaign takes us. Uh, I've never done the Rebel Path before, so... Uh, I'm very curious to see where it takes us next. Although I'm fairly certain it takes us to the Stone Sea. So I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.